Short response questions are those that require you to write several sentences or paragraphs in order to answer the question. You typically find them on a science worksheet or in your exams. Providing strong responses to short response questions in science can be a difficult thing to do. It's a skill you have to learn and practice. Being able to write well-developed answers is often the difference between weaker and stronger students in a class. You may have a very good understanding of the science concepts covered in a course, but your performance or grades will often not reflect this unless you can communicate it in writing, particularly in the case of exams. This video will try to give you some tips on how to improve your ability in answering short response questions. Firstly, when responding to short response questions in science, always keep in the back of your mind that you are trying to demonstrate your knowledge of what you've learnt in that specific course not what you knew previously or what is common knowledge. You really must demonstrate to your teacher or examiner that you have an in-depth understanding of what you were taught. For this reason, you should treat worksheets as if they are exams, because they're basically really good practice, and you can seek feedback on your answers from your teachers. I had a teacher who wrote RTFQ on the front of one of my exam papers, and I didn't know what it meant, so I approached them and they explained to me that it meant read the question. I'll leave it up to your imagination as to what the F stood for. And they were right. When I looked at my responses, I could see that I had not directly answered the question that was asked. Instead, I had written responses to what I thought was the question, and as a result, was not awarded any marks. I see this mistake being made by students all the time. As such, the most important thing you can do is to gain an understanding of what the question is actually asking before you jump into writing your response. So read questions carefully and pay particular attention to the verb or verbs. Here are examples of two different questions from a biology exam. It doesn't matter if you don't understand or are not familiar with the content of the questions. For now, I just want you to focus on the verbs in each of these questions. The first question asks you to describe two ways in which the movement of water in a plant differs from the movement of carbon compounds. The second question asks you to explain the difference in excretory products of tadpoles and adult amphibians. The verb in the first question is describe and the verb in the second sentence is explain. These are two different words that require you to do two different things in your answer. Describe means that you have to give an account of characteristics or features, whereas explain means that you have to provide additional information that demonstrates understanding of reasoning and or application. These things have two completely different meanings and I often see students missing out on marks as they don't pay attention to the verb. Other common verbs include analyze, compare, contrast, demonstrate, predict, and justify. The easiest way to become familiar with these terms and what they mean is to refer to the glossary of verbs that you should be provided for your course. In fact, you should have a glossary of verbs sitting next to you whenever you are completing your worksheets or practicing for exams. Watch carefully for questions that require you to do more than one thing. For example, you may get a single sentence question that contains multiple parts. These questions might start by asking you to describe something, while the second part of the sentence asks you to justify or predict something. A good strategy is to underline a number each part of this question to, assure, to ensure that you address them in your response. Now that you've read and understood the question and paid particular attention to the verbs, you can start planning your answer. Teachers and examiners are looking for you to express yourself in a clear and logical sequence. So don't just start dumping everything in your brain down on paper. Take the time to plan your response. You'll have to develop your own strategy as, how, as to how to do this, but I personally like writing brief dot points or notes on a scrap bit of paper or just on the side of the exam of what I think should be included in the response. Initially, I write them down in any order I can think of them in, uh, and then I number them in the order that I think is going to be the most logical sequence. 
This forms the skeleton of my answer, which I can then turn into well-structured sentences. Keep in mind that short response science questions are not English essays. You do not have to write an introductory paragraph and then build your arguments towards a conclusion. Often, it is most effective to directly answer the question in your first sentence. Don't repeat or reword the question at the start of your answer. For example, question one, describe two ways in which the movement of water in a plant differs from the movement of carbon compounds. Don't start your answer by writing two ways in which the movement of water in a plant differs from the movement of carbon compounds include you're wasting valuable space that you could use to demonstrate your understanding. This is often where students will stop their response to a question. You may think I've answered this question directly and that's all I need to do. However, more often than not, you'll need to support or justify your answer with evidence. In science, this could mean referring to values in a graph or data you've been provided as part of the question, or introducing information that you've learned in the course. This is one important way you can demonstrate to your teacher or examiner that you have an in-depth understanding of what you've learned. Another important aspect of answering short response questions is to use the terminology of the subject in your response. Every topic in science has specific words and terms that you should use directly in your answers. For example, don't say, that stuff inside of cells that helps us pass on genetic material. Use the terms deoxyribonucleic acid, chromosomes, nucleus, etc. Not only should you use the terminology of your topic, you should also provide detailed descriptions about these terms in your responses. In summary, important tips in answering short response questions in science are read the question carefully. Pay attention to the verbs and know what they mean. Plan your response in a clear and logical sequence. Answer the question and provide evidence to support or justify your response. And use scientific terminology. Students often ask me about the amount of marks allocate, allocated to short response questions in exams, as they are not always certain of what it indicates. So I want to address this briefly. At the end of every question in your exam, you'll find the total number of marks that you can get for that answer. Like this example below, it's a three mark question. So does this, does this mean that there are three specific things that you need to include in your response? Well, the answer is yes, sometimes it is. But other times, it just means the examiner is looking for a more in-depth response to the question. There is no exact way of knowing, but by following the steps I've outlined for you, you stand the best chance of getting those marks. What I can say is that you should provide answers that are adequate to the marks. So an answer that's worth three points may require a more in-depth response than a question that is worth two marks. Again, this is a good place for you to look for multiple part questions. Remember, in answering short response questions, you are trying to demonstrate an in-depth knowledge of what you've learned in the course.